I'm already two minutes. Late. Okay, so welcome to our sales meeting. We have an equal amount of vendors as we do agents here. So feels like Keller Williams. It is true. If you know, you know, it's true. Okay, let's uh, let's start with our, our birthdays. There's a lot of people in June. That means the fall was popular at some time in the life. If everybody gets cold, starts having babies. Um, also, all these people on here, great. Happy birthday month. Um, we're going to go ahead and celebrate it today, even though today's the last day. Like I said, because we're not having a sales meeting. I do want to throw in um, our very own Tana. It's her birthday month, too. Yay, Happy birthday, you. Tana. Thank and then you. Giselle, our front desk person, her birthday's Friday. She's a birthday twin with Tana. Yeah, best day ever. Yeah, make sure you tell her happy birthday too. Mm. Uh, a lot of people, anybody in this room on here? No? Your name up there? No? Okay. And we don't know when the vendor's birthdays are, so sorry about that. Okay, uh, wants, needs. Gratitude, celebrations, anything? Want to, anybody want to share anything? Well, I will say you all should be grateful for all those that we celebrate a Memorial Day for. Yeah, be in your thoughts. We went to uh, Arling Arlington Cemetery when I was in DC last month, and it's still so cool and somber. You, even though you got all those little bratty kids doing field trips and yelling and screaming as they walk, it's still pretty cool. So we are grateful for our military and those that have passed on. Anybody else have anything to lighten the mood? Corey, you got anything celebrating? Do men like graduations, celebrations, I guess that's like gratitude. I'm a little old. That's okay. Um, my youngest. No longer, I have four daughters. My youngest, I have little sons. Well, I have some of the line now, but um, my youngest daughter graduated high school this year. Wow, okay, so that's awesome. My wife tried to meet you, but that's a little problem. Yeah, they're like ready to move out. Oh, okay. All right. Good job. We're celebrating for sure. I was crying a little bit, but. So good, yeah, <laughs> grandkids start coming, she'll be happy again. That's how it goes. Right, right. I get that. Okay, if nobody else has anything, just speak up if you're online, unmute, and we'll move on to our broker moment, which is I want to make sure you guys understand uh, the process of cancellation uh, and an earnest money release. So the first thing that you should be doing as an agent is get the signed cancellation uh, delivered, right? And uploaded to Skyslope. We need the proof of delivery. Now, that what that means is, let's say you're representing the buyer and they're withdrawing, whether it's before due diligence or whenever, and um, you need to make sure that that cancellation is delivered to the other agent. We need proof of that delivery, okay? Because if we end up going through the steps where you've submitted things for the cancellation, but you didn't notify the other party and, and have it delivered, and then they're actually end up entitled to that earnest money, then there's a big problem, right? Agents end up paying for those things out of their own pockets. Okay, so then you'll make sure that delivery has happened. We need proof of that delivery, and then you'll uh, put the right form, put the earnest money release forms filled out properly. And if there's an extension, to your repsy, um, we need to know about it. So if there's something that, like I said, extended the due diligence deadline and we only see what's on the repsy, we'll probably deny it if you're going for that reason. So you make sure that you send us all the right documents the first time, not the second and third time that I have to ask questions and get it. So send me all your documents. It makes things so much faster and easier. And you can send them right to our payroll Gmail right there, which is presidiopayroll at gmail.com, or just um, put them all in an email. Um, make sure that they're all there. Otherwise, if we have to go digging for it, it just takes a lot longer for it all to happen. Okay, any questions on that? Nope, pretty clear, right? Pretty basic and easy. Yep, the only thing we've added in there is that proof of delivery has to be there. 
Okay, uh, the week at a glance. Again, there's going to be no sales meeting, but we'll still have um, uh, training going on at one o'clock with uh, Stephen Presbury's class for new agent training. And it's all CE. So if you guys need the CE, you should be jumping on those classes to get it. They're all free. Uh, we have the Utah State uh, Real Estate Law class coming up on Thursday of next week. So, okay. And check this out. We had 54 closings last week alone. Isn't that amazing? Wow, good job. If you're in here, anybody in here had a closing last week on this list? No? Taylor Woodbury, look at that. He was in here today to pick up some mail. He had five. He says it's his best week ever. Crazy, huh? So congratulations. And yeah, this kind of tells you we're still busting at it. We're still doing things. And Presidio is awesome because of our agents. So, okay. Is, uh, what's her name? Courtney, thank you. I assume she's not online or she would have already yelled at me for not remembering her name. So y'all know about this. We say it every time. Okay, if not, reach out to us, reach out to Courtney. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's go through our list. Um, let's start with Corey. You're here live and in person. I am here live and in person. I'll be fairly quick. I'll be fairly quick, but I'm um, but uh, but just find us a little card for the month that we do off we do have still have sprinkler coverage um with our top plan so we're the only company that I know of in, in the state that does it but um uh I love I'm gonna take you back off of the closings a little bit and, and actually Penn and I back to the back have had a little, a little quick little conversation and actually it's funny you asked me this just barely because that's what I want to talk about today is we actually offer this reminder and I know from you know this I know they're already playing this but we have free listing coverage. Right, so free listing coverage for the life of the listing. There's no cost to it. There's obviously just a service call fee if there's ever an issue. Um, and the services that we have with, for those of you that don't know Elevate Home Descriptions, we're a home warranty company, but we have additional services like uh, carpet cleaning, window washing, um, garbage bin cleaning, dryer bin cleaning, all these other services that, that, that people can use on the warranty. They can use it for the listing coverage as well. So it's kind of cool. So anyways, and then, um, uh, and if you have questions on that, you can ask me, but my next lunch, so, so Steve, Steve brought up, we did a lunch, me, me and a, 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 um, Jared Finn, he's a, an inspector and everybody's been to a couple of them, but we do a lunch every month um, and we have 20 to 30 agents show up. Some of them, some loan officers, some title, but mostly real estate agents. We have a lot of agents from this office coming. Um, and so continue to come, please come. Our next one is not June 16th, it's June 15th. So mark this in your calendar. If you're not friends with me on social media, add me, Instagram, um, Facebook, um, and you'll see we always post things on these lunches. But June 15th is a Thursday at 11.30, Hungry Hawaiian in Provo. If you ever, it's my buddy from high school owns it. He's straight up Hawaiian. Um, his name's Kiave Aikau, extremely Hawaiian name. But the food is, I've been to Hawaii eight or seven or eight times, different islands. But um, And I say that because I love Hawaiian food. This is the best Hawaiian food I've ever had in the States, not in Hawaii. It's a little bit better in Hawaii because it's Hawaiian. Yeah, fresh. But it's yeah, yeah. here. It's just called here in the States. It's just food, man. It's yeah. food. They don't call it Hawaiian. That's right. right. But anyway, come. We pay for your lunch. Um, we pay for it. There's it's, all we all we want is we started this back in November. All we want is just a place to it was kind of when the market kind of started going like this, right? So like, what can we do to make just Come and hang out. We don't, if you want to talk shop, you want to talk business, we'll talk business. If you don't, let's hang out and get to know each other. And one of the cool things that's come out of it, this happened again last week when we did it, um, is agents from different companies. So um, we actually had uh, an agent talk to another agent and they didn't really know each other. But then when they got to know each other, like, wait, we did a, we did a closing together like six months ago or something like that. So some of the, some of the connections that we're seeing is really, really, really cool. Um, I'm a big face-to-face -face guy. I don't love, I, when, when COVID happened, I hated Zoom. I hate all that stuff. So I love face-to-face. -face. So if, if you want to come hang out, if you're shy, just come and eat the food and just say, don't talk to me. And that's fine too. Um, I'd be surprised if any of these real estate were shy. But anyways, um, but come and hang out, free food. And I can say this hungry Hawaiian and Provo is, it's delicious, delicious food. They have amazing teriyaki sauce and amazing guava cake. Um, and I love it. So anyways, come. No questions asked. Come and and if I don't recognize you, don't say you because some of you I never I can see before. Come and say hey, I was at studio sales meeting. I'm an agent. 
Um, and I say, I'll say, come hang out and eat some food. And you better come next week. I'll try. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Petter, you want to come on up from Traveling Title? Yeah, just quick, I want to share kind of a thought. It's not just title specific, but it applies to everybody here. Um, applies to this whole industry because this is a, a service industry. You're all professionals. You do training. You do these meetings. You are better at your craft this week than last week. But it's still a service industry. Okay, and that's that's the key. Uh, I was in a Lowe's home improvement store the other day buying some stuff for the garden and I wanted some seven foot T-posts and I couldn't find them. So I asked one of the people working there, said, do you have seven foot T-posts? And, and this is what he did. He said, I don't know. Hold on. And then he just sends a call over the loudspeaker for somebody to report to aisle two of the garden center. Not a specific person by name, just somebody report there. Well, that's where I was standing. So I wait there for about 10 minutes. Nobody comes. So I went down the road to the tractor supply and found my post. And so they missed out. And so I've been thinking about it for the last few days, that whole ceremony. If I was that gentleman, what could I have done? What could have been done better? And maybe he didn't know the answer. And that's okay if you don't know an answer. But there I was with a need in their place of establishment. I came to them with the question, with the need, with the willingness to buy. And they didn't solve my problem. And he didn't pass me off and say, Steve, can you help this guy fix his problem? Because I don't know how. There was no handoff. There was no nothing. And I felt just unappreciated. So I took my business somewhere else. And so I've just been thinking about that a lot. Okay, how do we as service providers make sure we meet that client's objective? And sometimes they don't know what their objective is. So we have to find out what that is and get them there. And so that's just my thought. I just want to share that with you all. Just how are we doing that in, in our interactions with everybody, helping them get what they need and get the job done. So that's it. Thanks, Better. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Is there anybody from Silverback Home Warranty online or here? Ibex? Nope. Obio? Acclaim? Two-man movers? Just going down the list fast as I can. Okay. Um, Melissa, do you want to say anything before you do the class or? Then it's, that's only, yep. you can only get credit. If... Oh, wow. Not online? Oh, wow. Okay. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what Melissa is saying is that today's class is not approved for Zoom, but you can stay and get the information, but only the people here live will be able to get the CE credit. And it's one hour class. Okay. All right. Hello. Uh, well, that's a great question. And Thanks. yeah, yeah. And we have Matthew Simpson here to explain what Lolo is now. That is an excellent intro, Corey. Okay, Matt, you want to take over the screen? Yes, I will. Let me uh, get this rolling, and then I will. I think we planned that. <laughs> yeah. Make sure this loads up okay. Um. Okay, let me go back to the, what screen are you seeing now? Are you seeing, okay. I'm gonna do this again real quick and then. All right, can you see this okay? Okay, so um, my name is Matthew. I'm um, one of the founders of Lolo. I'm gonna run through this really fast. I, I talked with Jen the other day. Um, I've been in relationship sales for 25 plus years. Real estate is relationship business. It's all about nurturing your existing sphere of influence and maintaining those relationships over the long haul to ensure that you get more referrals and repeat business. So we built a product that is designed to do that with a set it and forget it mentality that creates conversations and connection each month. Um, as you probably know, more than half of sellers and buyers find their agent through a referral or past sale. 
Um, but often agents will focus on lead gen versus just nurturing those existing relationships. My co-founding partner had a great story about this exact problem, bought his first, first home in the Asheville, North Carolina market in 2007, moved again in 2013, and then to his current home in 2017. Loved his agent after each transaction, said he would use the agent again, but the reality was he lost touch with each one. So we ended up using three agents over a 10 year period. That should never happen. An agent should consistently stay top of mind and invest in staying top of mind. There's lots of options for doing that. They can be challenging, time consuming, costly, um, but they all work if they're executed properly. But what we did is we created the local gift of the month um, designed to help you stay top of mind consistently. We source a gift at a local independent business each month. And currently we, we have a gift each month in Salt Lake City and a gift each month in Orem Provo area. Then we send it via email and text message from your email address with your branding to the people that matter the most to you, designing designed to keep you in touch with them. You select the recipients. We curate the gift. We send it out. Your recipients feel appreciated. Conversations are created. And then you get all of the data about it. You can send it to anyone you like. This is for anyone that has a sphere of influence and wants to stay in touch with them. You can do past clients, leads, inspe home inspectors, contractors, anyone you work with, lenders, Title, anybody who you want to stay connected with, put them in the system, first name, last name, email, phone number, pick the area they're in, they'll get the gift for that area each month. The system is single sender exclusive, meaning once you put a contact in and start sending a gift to them, you have an exclusive relationship for that gift in that area. If someone else adds, it'll wait list them for that area. The gift values around eight to $10 each month, something like a latte and a pastry at a coffee shop, a dozen donuts at a bakery, a candle at a boutique, something meaningful at the local business that is representative of that business for the recipient. Each month, 48 hours before the gift sends out, it sends you a notification letting you know what the gift is and the message we've pre-written for you. You can do nothing. It'll automatically send each month on your behalf. If you'd like to edit the message, you can. So it gives you that personalization option. The gift goes via email and text message. You can customize the logo, colors, and your profile photo, contact information, we do all the gift details and write the message for you. It also goes via text message from a five-digit short code with your name and the name of the business. We recommend creating a contact card or V-card in advance and sharing it with all the people you're going to text it to. That gives you some control over the fun contact record that's popping up in their phone. You can make that a fun experience and be in their phone all the time. Um, the goal of the program is simple convey gratitude and appreciation to your sphere of influence, create conversations that are not real estate related. And this translates to more and more connections with your sphere. The whole, whole goal is just taking whatever network you have and over time growing it consistently with a thoughtful touch point. The redemption process is very easy. You simply show your phone at the local business as a recipient, the local business taps your phone, gives you the gift, credits you for the gift, and then they get paid for all of the gifts that are redeemed. Each vendor has a, an account with us, and it's a little bit like a Venmo account that they can cash out of. Every time a gift is redeemed, you receive a notification as a sender. Um, again, this is a great conversation starter for the next time you talk to that recipient. But the goal of the program is not redemptions, it's engagement, it's understanding your sphere of influence and what percentage of people are consistently seeing your brand and staying top of mind with you. So our system will show you an engagement score, which looks at clicks, opens, redemptions, anything that can happen in the system and shows you over the last 90 days whether someone is engaged or not. This is a great opportunity to understand your sphere, make calls when you need to to people who are inactive, and ultimately grow your sphere and make it more engaged. You can click on any individual and see all their interactions as well. Uh, the program, I've, I've worked with Jen to set up an account for all Presidio agents who would like to participate which gives you the best rate on our program. It's $1.25 per recipient per month with a minimum of 25 contacts. So you can set up an account, put your credit card on file, put your contacts in a minimum of 25. You can send 25 people a gift for a little over $31 a month. That's it, flat fee, no other costs. Um, we've been doing this for a long time and we're a little bit like an insurance company. We know the average recipient will open most of these gifts and they'll go and redeem one, about one a year. So we take all the money we collect from you sending it, we pay out the local vendors with that and give you a very cost-effective way to have a meaningful touch point each month. The gifts that are upcoming currently, and these are not guaranteed because the local vendors change all the time, but just to give you an idea, in, in June in the Orem Provo area, it's at a place called The Chocolate. In July, it's at Penguin Brothers. And in August, it's at a place called Pop and Dot. In Salt Lake City, it's um, in June, a place called Pantry Products. 
in, in the Maven district. In July, it's at Penguin Brothers, and in August, it's at Pi Fight. Um, if you'd like to get started, you can reach out to any of the education department. They have the links, but you can also just go to joinlolo.com slash presidio and follow the instructions there. We also have a setup guide that can be emailed to you if you'd like. And with that, I'll bump it back to you. I know you've got a um, you know, short time. Cool. Thanks, Matt. One of the things I like about the product is that it's at a unique business. It's not like at McDonald's or some nationwide chain. So um, we're supporting our local businesses by doing this. And the price um, that Jen negotiated is, is fantastic for doing this. It's a set it and forget it type thing. And we all need to be doing that, especially if you're farming or just working your sphere of influence. This is the type of product that um, we want to be able to bring to you guys uh, to do. So thanks, Matt. We appreciate it. Yep. Corey, does that answer your question, what Lolo is? Yeah, great. Well, any questions for Matt, from anybody? Any questions? Online, any questions for Matt? All right. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate you. Okay. Take care. Okay. Um, any other vendors come in that I didn't allow to talk, speak? Anybody want to speak? I'll what? Oh, Blake's teaching. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay, so let's go ahead and remember, um, this is a C class for those that are present. It, it has not been approved through the division to do over Zoom. Uh, it's great information if you want to stay online and, and, and participate, but you don't get credit online only if you're live and in person, and that should teach you a lesson. Get in here, we've been saying it. However, because you're not in here, we're canceling sales meeting for June and July in the PG office. That's only our PG office. I don't know about the other branches. They can do what they want to do, but know that this is our last meeting until the 1st of August, okay? All right, so First Colony, come on up. We're grateful to have you and appreciate you being here. And I will just turn it over to you and when you're done, you're done. Well, here's the problem. If I do that, it includes everybody. I'll the Zoom call. Do you want to try to log into your Dropbox? Yeah. Okay. You well, won't lose us unless you end it, because I still have to record it and put it on our website and the university and YouTube. What's best for you? Um, they would basically just be, I wouldn't be sharing my screen. They would be watching this screen through the camera. Um, whatever whatever you can do because it's this. live class stay start these so they can start putting in their licenses sure. i'm going to hop on dropbox i can okay. see if i can download this thing. all right so minimize there you go okay guys so this is my friend and colleague blake he is a fantastic loan officer also with first colony and he is going to be teaching the class today for us. It is a one hour CE class. And I think it's really good information for you guys to know kind of what we do to try to help your clients maximize their purchase power. Um, and so he's just logging in here so that he can get his presentation. Yeah, guys, sorry, it's not um, the state, you know how it is with continuing education. They are pretty picky about um, monitoring and managing attendance and all that kind of stuff. And so, so they don't allow us to do these over Zoom. Um, so, yeah. So, so I apologize that we can't give credit to those that are out on the Zoom call, but it just kind of is what it is. So but I will try to get this so I can share my screen. Um, can we not broadcast my screen for a second though? Okay, we're not. We're going to be able to get this.
Oh, see how fast that was? Okay, I hope so. Let's see. All right, Steve, now we just got to share my screen to the Zoom and we are good to go. All right. People on Zoom, can you see that? Yeah, you need to maximize it though, because we can see your side. We can see your slideshow like on the left. Well, I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Steven here still. What about now? Yep, that looks great. There we go. Okay, we got it. All right, so we have the attendance sheet going around, um, and but we'll just we'll just cruise here. So, so Melissa, thanks for inviting me. So again, my name is Blake Bench. I'm a loan officer with with Melissa at First Colony, and you know, I I come from a background of educators, and I just love to I just love to teach. I just find it a a lot more fun than than uh, all the other forms of you know bugging you when you're when you're in the office and everything. So we we really like this class. Um, and so what is? Let me ask you guys this question: What has been? What is the biggest obstacle that you have in your business right now? What's the biggest thing you would say that you've got to overcome to sell more homes? Don't be shy. Chime in. Rates. Okay. Rates. Anything else? Supply. Supply. Okay. Anything else? These questions guys. Thank you. The Lawrence guy is killing her. <laughs> um, how about home prices? Home prices came up, um, which we love, but it, but then rates came up, so we have an affordability problem. That's if I can I summarize it all into that basket, if that's okay with everybody. So we have this issue with affordability. Home prices went up, rates went up, income didn't go up as much or at least in pace with those things. So we have an affordability issue. Um, and I think that's really what we need to seek to solve. And, you know, we, we do what we can do. We can only do so much, but what I want to show is some of the things that we do to help combat affordability. Um, so we want to look for opportunities to help your buyers reduce their mortgage payments. We're going to show you some strategies and some tools that Melissa and I use well, I want to show you how that impacts you in your business. So how does us manipulating the mortgage payment affect your business? So we're going to show you how those things translate. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple of different payment kind of relief options, buy downs, things like that. We'll explore that. So let's just get real basic, kind of real estate mortgage 101. What goes into a mortgage payment? So we have these five things. Um, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and then mortgage insurance. Um, I list mortgage insurance because of our purchase transactions that we did at First Colony last year, 75% of the purchase transactions that we did had mortgage insurance PMI. So that's a huge percentage of your buyers will have will have that. It's going to be a, it's going to likely be a part of, of what you're seeing. So of those five parts of the mortgage payment, what do we actually have control over? Um, so you guys in the room, you guys are shy, but tell me, do we have control over the amount of money that is being paid to principal? Not really, not really. Principal is affected by the loan amount. 
Um, so maybe the, the buyer's down payment, they do more down, we can affect that. But we have very little control or ability to manipulate how much is going to the principal. What about, what about the interest? Can we control how much is going to interest? So same kind of thing. We can control the interest rate um, a little, a little bit. Um, the market's going di to dictate the interest rate. We can, we can control the rate maybe a little bit by messing with our margins. Um, I would equate that to, you know, sure, I can, I can give somebody a lower rate by giving a lower margin. It's kind of the same idea as you guys taking a listing for 1%. Can you do it? Yes. Do you want to do it? No. <laughs> um, would you be broke pretty quick if you only took 1% on the deals you got? Maybe. Um, so we can do that. We can control that, but not very much. So we're not going to talk. We're not going to get too much into that. What about property taxes? Can we control those? No, they are what they are. Um, same thing with insurance. Maybe we can tell the insurance agent, hey, where numbers are really tight, let's take a bigger deductible and maybe bring that premium down a little bit. But that's a whole other that's a whole other class talking about insurance. So we're not going to get into that too much. Now, mortgage insurance or PMI, this is actually an area where we we can do a lot of stuff. Um, people don't realize this about mortgage insurance. You often think just as what it is. I need PMI. What's the number? Oh, it's X amount of number, X amount per month. PMI, the amount that people are paying is determined by a lot of things. It's this whole algorithm. They look at their income. They look at their credit, um, how much down payment. A lot of people don't know that there's six different big mortgage insurance companies. And each one has a slightly different algorithm. So if I shop all six mortgage insurance companies, I can find one usually that's a little cheaper than the others. Um, but there's a lot of factors that go into that. So we're going to take actually a fair amount of time talking about what we, what we can do to manipulate PMI. Um, so let's, let's hit you guys with a scenario really quickly. Um, so we get a referral from you. Thank you so much for sending your buyer over to us. His name's Joe. Um, I'll get on the phone with Joe. Joe, hey, this is Blake with First Colony. We have a mutual friend. What's your name? Jason. Jason Jason asked me to give you a call. I understand you're buying a house. Uh, I'm stoked that you got hooked up with Jason. He's a rock star. If you're going to have a great experience. Let's talk about your scenario, Joe. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, tell me about your down payment. Tell me one of the most important things that I want to know from Joe is what are you comfortable with? for a monthly payment. Not how much can you qualify for? What are you comfortable with? You and your wife, you do your budget. What can you afford? And Joe comes back to me and says, you know what, Blake, max 2,500 a month. I can't go over 2,500 a month or it's gonna break me. Um, so we're gonna look at everything for Joe through the lens of $2,500 a month. Um, I find out that he has 5% down. He has a salary of $6,000 a month plus a bonus. That's important. Let's come back to that in a, in a little bit. He has good credit, 735. Would anyone argue that 735 is pretty good credit? He has very little debt. Um, and he's got a debt to income ratio of 41%. So Melissa, you see this scenario. What's your thought? Yeah, you're stoked. This is a good... This is a good buyer, right? He can go out and he can go buy a house tomorrow. Okay. Um, so if today's rate is 6%, it's a little higher today, but not much. But if, so we're pretty close. If today's rate is 6%, here's how his payment breaks down. Now you don't need to, we don't need to get too much into the weeds on this, but when you add that all up, it comes to exactly $2,500 a month. And that is a pre-approval of $380,000. So that's what Joe can qualify for with 5% down to keep his payment at $2,500 a month. So easy peasy, we're done. Pre-approval out the door. We're sending that to Jason. Go, go look for homes tomorrow, right? So <laughs> you're not excited about 380, Jason? <laughs> 
Um, we're going to talk about what the, what's out there at 380 right now. Um, so I don't, I, I think that in our industry, there are a handful of really great loan officers. Now, I, I see the world of lending through the lens of First Colony Mortgage. It's sort of like my blue goggles, so to speak. Um, I know that we have rock star loan officers at First Colony. I don't see loan officers on a day-to-day -day basis from other companies. But I can tell you very confidently that a lot of loan officers get here and they shoot you a pre-approval letter and they are done. Now, for me, I'm, I'm the manager of the First Colony uh, branch here across the hall in Pleasant Grove. For our loan officers, that's not enough. You guys expect a higher level from us. So this, sending you this pre-approval right now isn't enough. And so, I don't, so we're gonna tell you what our loan officers do to help you with that number. How do we get more than 380? But remember, his budget is 2,500 bucks a month. I can't just go to 450 and push his payment to three grand. We can't do it. So how can we get you a higher number without increasing his payment? That's that's the real vision here. So first off, we want to look at credit. Um, oh, so are you guys? Do you guys remember maybe a month ago, a little over a month ago, social media started kind of going crazy with all this stuff about they're changing the way rates are working, and now the good credit people are going to subsidize the rates for all the bad credit people. Do you remember all that stuff? Um, well, that was that was a little bit of an exaggeration of what's really going on. This is really small print and really numbery, but let me, um, for lenders, we love numbery, but let me kind of explain what's happening here. This is just showing you all the different rate and pricing. When I say pricing, in your mind, equate that to loan origination fee. So. If I have a higher rate, I get a lower loan origination fee. Um, if I, sorry, if I have a higher credit score, I get a lower loan origination fee. And our guy, our guy Joe, is doing five percent down, so he's going to finance ninety-five percent. So he fits in this column right here. And so as his credit score gets better his loan origination fee goes down. Now we can kind of trade off loan origination fee for a lower rate. So if I, if I keep the loan origination fee the same, then that would equate to a lower rate. So that's, that's where all this comes from. If you have a better credit score, you get a lower interest rate. That's how it works. Um, so these are called loan level pricing adjustments. And so right now we're at 735. So we are right here. We're not top tier credit. 735 used to be almost top tier credit. It used to be that at 740, you got the same rate as someone with an 800 credit score. Well, that's changed. So now the top, with those tiers go up every 20 points to 780. So we can improve Joe's credit score a little bit. We can help him. I just, we just cheated. You got a preview. Um, so here's a, here's a little snapshot of a tool that we use called a, called a credit simulation or a, a what if simulator. This is specifically from TransUnion. Um, this is small. You guys are a little ways away. Can you see this? As you look at these three items on Joe's credit, we've got the name of the company. We've got the data open, his credit limit. In this case, they're all revolving or credit cards. Here's his balances compared to his limits. Is there anything that jumps out to you right away that may be affecting Joe's credit negatively? Be brave. I would, I would say two things. Okay. One is 102% of balance. Awesome. But two, I think anything over 30% can negatively affect your credit score. Yeah, they're different tiers. So definitely if he's maxed out, in this case, he's maxed out, that's gonna help affect his score. Um, so then the, the closer he gets to zero, the, the more that will improve. So yeah, you're exactly right. Thanks, Jason. He's maxed out. Anything else? 
you see anything else here that is interesting or raises a question? So we got the same thing on this city card, also over 50% utilization. Um, see how these say, this, it's tiny, it's small. I don't know if you guys can even see it, but he's an authorized user. So in this scenario, what happened, and this is a real deal that we closed a couple of months ago. Um, dad added Joe to all of dad's credit cards to help Joe build his credit. You've heard of that happening before. So that was awesome of dad because it definitely helped until dad maxed out his chase card. Probably by helping Joe fix his car. I don't know. Um, but that's maxed out. So we can either make dad pay that car off, that card off, or we can simply remove Joe from that card as an authorized user. That's what we did in this case. We had dad call Chase, said, hey, go ahead and take my son Joe off of that credit card. Then we updated the credit report. No longer do we have that maxed out credit card showing up and his credit score just jumped from 735 to 756, 21 points. And now in like two days is what it takes us to process that type of rapid rescore, two or three days. So what does that do for you? Credit score goes to 756. Our rate drops from six to 5875 because we ended up in a lower tier or a better tier of credit. Our principal and interest payment goes down $30, which increases our purchasing power by five grand. So now, we, now we're at 385. Now here's what a lot of people don't realize. We need to do the same thing with mortgage insurance. Credit affects mortgage insurance. 735 credit, we went from $167 a month to $126 a month. So that extra $41 gives you an extra seven grand in buying power. Now we're at 392 on your pre-approval. So we're just getting started. So, so next, we talked about this city car, um, that it was 50%. So yes, 30% is a tier, but it's really, there's a bunch of tiers, like almost every 10 or 15% on utilization. It just depends on the overall profile. It's a whole algorithm. But in this case, if we got it down under 50, and in this case to five grand, that jumped our score again. Now in this, in this scenario, dad had already paid that card down a little bit. It just hadn't reported yet. So this says we need, we need dad to pay the card down by almost $900. But all we did is we called city. We had the credit bureaus call city and update it. And after doing that, the score jumped to 764. So same thing. Now 760 is another tier of better of better rates. So we drop the rate again from six to 5.75. That gives us another $30 a month. That's another five grand in purchasing power. So now we're at 397. And then we get to do the same thing again with mortgage insurance. $126 down to 101. So that extra 25 bucks gives you another four grand in purchasing power. Now we're at 401. So doing this kind of stuff, um, especially with credit is not free and it takes time. And so I, I think that's part of the reason it's, it's sort of, you know, for lack of a, using a cliche term, it's sort of going the extra mile to do this. And I, I really, I think a lot of people just don't take the extra effort to do it, but I mean, we've already made a pretty big difference and we're not even done yet. So, so another thing, um, our guy, Joe is married, but his wife doesn't work. So how many times have you had a contract where you've had the lender or somebody say, Hey, we're not using the wife. Can you write us an addendum? Let's just take the take the wife off the contract. You had that happen? Um, well, sometimes we need to do that. But in this case, um, I want to add the I want to add his wife onto this thing, even though she doesn't work. 
because mortgage insurance looks at that favorably. They say, okay, Joe Halt falls on hard times, loses his job. We have now another person in the household that can help support. So if we add his spouse, our mortgage insurance drops again to $72 a month. Um, remember we talked about Joe gets a bonus. So Melissa, if you've got a buyer that you're working with whose income, who has bonus or commission or overtime versus a salary or on top of a salary, what do you have to do in those scenarios in order to count that income? Okay. Okay. Just to show that it's been consistent. So you've got to get a verification of employer, which entails what? Uh, they fill out a form just saying how much they've made year to date in the last couple of years and break it breaks down how they've received their income. Yeah. So you're going to send the employer a form. You got to average that income over two years. You're probably going to have your junior processor make a couple of phone calls and follow up. Um, in some cases, it's an online service like the work number, which may cost us 25 bucks to order it. Um, is, I mean, it's not super hard, but it's extra work, right? So, but he qualified just fine with his salary. So if he qualifies just fine with just his salary, why would we bother? Well, here's why. <laughs> He was at 41 on his debt to income ratio. He gets cheaper mortgage insurance if he has a lower debt to income ratio. So if Melissa takes that extra time, which I know she does, she gets that form, she averages the income, redoes her income worksheets, takes a little extra work, a little extra time, a little more processing. Um, she can lower his mortgage insurance from $100 a month to under $70 a month. So. That's another $32. I can tell you right now, absolutely. Um, Freddie Mac sent us, we, we are a big partner with, we sell a lot of loans to Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac loves us. They provide us a lot of data. They, they send us these reports um, and they, they gave us some massive percentage. Well, not massive, but surprising percentage. Something like 40 to 50% of the loans that they purchased could have had a lower debt to income ratio had the lender used additional income. So <clears throat> what that tells me right away is that lenders are sometimes lazy the, or, or just ultra conservative. Um, and sometimes there's reasons for that, but if there's income there that we can use, we can improve the scenario in a lot of cases. It just takes extra work. It takes extra effort from the loan house. So $32 a month gives you another six grand in purchasing power. Now we're up to 407. Um, let's talk about single premium mortgage insurance for just a second. By raise of hand, any of you guys heard of single premium mortgage insurance before? Melissa has. Mm -hmm. She uses it sometimes. Um, have you... Have you ever had your car insurance agent tell you, okay, your insurance is going to be $100 a month, but if you'll pay it all up front, we'll do it for $900. Yeah. Okay. Mortgage insurance is the same thing. More insurance companies in general, they want our money. They're going to reinvest it and hope you don't need, need it in the future. So if they can collect your, our money up front, they'll give us a discount. Um, in the case of mortgage insurance, it's a massive discount. So we're talking like 50% off. So rather than paying $70 a month for eight years is how long that mortgage insurance would be on there. We could do the math on that. I think it comes out to around eight grand. We, if we pay it all off up front, we can do it for $4,000. Now, here's a really cool thing about it. Our buyer, Joe, doesn't even have to come up with this money out of pocket necessarily. I can add that to his loan. He's done with mortgage insurance. His payment drops another $42. His, his purchasing power goes up another eight grand. And, and now we're at 415 on your pre-approved. Um, 
So let's just kind of recap here for a second. So we started at 380. And again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I, I know based on the data that we're given, um, a lot of lenders will literally send you that pre-approval and stop. Here's, so here's what we, we do. Here's what we did in this scenario. We removed an authorized user. How much did that cost our buyer, Joe? His dad had to make a phone call. No big deal. We had to pay down a credit card by $900. Now, in this case, dad had already done it. So cost, nothing. We updated the credit report. We lowered the interest rate. We added his wife to the loan. Now, when we add the when we add a spouse to the loan, there's a little more effort there too. There's more disclosures. There's we got to get her driver's license. We got to check title, see if she has any stuff. So there's some there's some extra work there as well. If we didn't add his spouse, we could have just improved his debt ratio by using that bonus income that was sitting right there for us. Um, we did the single premium mortgage insurance, and we got to four fifteen. So. There's a difference between houses. You guys all yeah. Do yeah. Let's let's actually look at that right now. So we got a nine percent increase in purchasing power for this buyer. Oh, this didn't save, but I I I ran the. You guys have the MLS on your phone? Okay, pull up, pull it up. Let's get you on there. Uh, we'll see if you get the same numbers that I got. Just searching like from the consumer side of the MLS, which I know is not as robust and accurate. Let's do Lehigh. This has this has Provo. Last time I did this class, I, I put in Provo zip codes, but let's do Lehigh, the zip code 84043. So tell me this, how many active listings are on the market right now in Lehigh at or below 380,000. If there's somebody still out there on Zoom that gets this before everybody else, unmute and, and jump in here. But how many active listings in Lehigh at or below 380? We're searching, we're searching. And yeah, anybody out on Zoom, go ahead and feel free to jump in here if you've got five. We got five. We got six. You're both probably, I don't, I mean. I just put 80 is the cap. Okay. Lehigh. And you came up with six? You came up with five. When I searched this morning, I found four, but that's from my side. I don't, I probably don't have some new listing that showed up this morning or something. So five or six. Um, when I looked, all of those were. Townhomes, condos, or, or mobile homes. So six active listings. So now tell me, let's run the same search at 415. At, with at or below 415, how many homes are on the market? Mm -hmm. I, I had 19, but we're I'm sure we're right there, 18 or 19. So we went from six to 18 or 19, depending on what you're seeing. So we just tripled the amount of homes available to that buyer. So if you're representing a buyer, I'm not in your world. So I'm making assumptions about being a realtor, but being able to show 19 homes compared to six homes. Somebody tell me what kind of a difference that makes to you. Um, and how do you, how are you then perceived? I think maybe it's an equally important question. Sure, surely it gives you more options to sell them, but how are they perceived? Let's say that they talk to Somebody else, I mean, buyers don't really do that. They don't really talk to multiple buyer's agents. So maybe this is not relevant, right? Buyers don't do that. Um, but if some other buyer's agent said, yeah, I got six homes to show you. I got five homes to show you. 
and you come in and you say, yeah, I got 19 homes to show you. How is that? How are you perceived as a value to them compared to that other buyer's agent? I mean, those are kind of rhetorical questions. I think that makes a massive difference. So we want to make sure that we're helping you to have more options and you know appear to be the professional that you are rather than limiting your ability. Um, I want to share an example of this with you. Now, this is a little this is a little bit different, but I still I still think applicable. I, I lived in St. George for like 10 years. And for most of my time there, um, I was a preferred lender for Salisbury Homes. They're still around. Um, at that time they were they were pretty big in St. George, building like 250, 300 homes a year in St. George. And we were their preferred lender. And then um, another mortgage company came in. I won't, I won't give you their name, but basically offered to give them construction financing and give them a bunch of joint marketing money that we just didn't feel like was, anyway, that's a whole other story. Anyway, another mortgage company came in and Salisbury started using them as their preferred lender. Um, the, the girl in the design center, her name was Cassie. She got paid commissions based on upgrades that she sold. Okay, so somebody comes in, builds a house, they got their base price, right? And they're going to add can lights in the kitchen and outlets and, you know, whatever, higher tile and carpet packages. So she got paid commission on those options that she sold to people. Well, she came to, she came to me about six months later. Um, we were close. We had a good relationship, but she came to me and she said, do you realize that since Salisbury switched from first colony to this other lender, my income has dropped by 50%. I'm probably going to have to find a different career because I can't make it with the commissions I'm getting right now. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? You're still, they're still building the same amount of homes. She's like, yeah, they're building the same amount of homes, but the buyers are not getting pre-qualified high enough. They're not choosing as many options. And I was like, Wow, that, that to me that was like this moment of okay, good. I mean, I was like that sucks, Cassie. I'm really sorry, but I'm glad that it was kind of a what's the word I'm looking for? Validating to me, yeah, because we 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 take a lot of pride in putting in that extra work to do this. This is exactly why because we did all these things, and that, that other mortgage company, I don't know if it was that they they didn't do these or they were just too scared and being too conservative on new construction but it made a big difference in that way. So, so we're gonna talk about a couple of other things. I just wanna see where we're at on time. Okay. Um, I, put these, I put these at the end because we don't really wanna use these as long-term solutions. Um, and we typically don't consider this these kind of options when we're qualifying somebody. But I want to talk for a minute about a 2-1 buy down. It's been pretty popular, especially the last 18 months. Anybody here brave enough to take a second, take a stab at what is a 2-1 buy down? It's a free 2-1 buy down, but over two years instead of three. Yes. Yes. So in our scenario, the rate for, for our guy, Joe, was 6%. So based on that, how does how does a two one buy down work? So first year five percent, second year, and then it goes back to six percent. So, so I wanna I wanna clarify though. So most of us are taught for the first year your rate's two percent less, so four percent. Year number two your rate is 1% less, so five. And then by year three, you're back to six. Well, that's actually not entirely true. Um, the key thing is your payment is calculated as if your rate was 2% less. And for year two, your payment is calculated as if your payment is 2% less. So the entire time, 
their rate is actually 6%. Their rate is never 4%. It's always six. They just get to pay as if their rate was four. So their payment should be, principal and interest should be 2,300. They only have to pay 1,882. So if the payment's 2,300, but the buyer's only paying 1,800, where's the difference coming from? So it's coming from the seller. The seller gave us a bunch of money to pay for this buy down at closing. We took that chunk of money, in this case it was $8,000. We took that money, we set it aside, almost like in an escrow account. So we set it over here in this account. Every month, your buyer's only paying 1,800, the payment's 23. So then pay 1,800, wait, we take the difference so the lender gets 23. And it comes out of this account over here. So every month that account balance is going down. And for 12 months, 5,000, after 12 months, $5,700 has come out of that account. So now there's only going to be three grand left. For the, then for the last, the last 12 months, your buyer gets to pay 2,100. Um, two grand, sorry, $200 a month comes out of the account. The lender still gets 2,300. Does that make sense? Um, so if they decide to refinance in, seven, in eight months from now, for example, there might be still $5,000 over here in this account. So what happens to that money? Melissa? You don't lose it. They don't lose it? Yeah. Used to help pay off a current loan and then the refinance. And get it back, not the cash, but it, it goes for their payoff. So your buyer gets it back. So, so they don't, they don't lose anything if they end up refinancing early or paying off the loan early compared to like if they did a permanent rate buy down, like if they paid points, you familiar with that term? If they refinance a year from now and they paid points to get a lower rate, that money they paid in points is just gone. That's just history. They lost it. In this case, they can get some of that back, which is really cool. So this, this can help. Now, what, what might be a scenario where this, where this is a, something that could work, that, that would be beneficial to, to somebody? Melissa, you're welcome to chime in. Um, I, I did like kind of sticker shop. Yeah, it's, cool. It kind of eases them into yeah for sure i get it. i get a little warm-up period i don't have to sprint right out the gate i can i can jog for a minute um <laughs> no kidding <laughs> yeah so yeah. And i might have a new job maybe i'm expecting a raise in a year yeah. Yeah, exactly. Maybe my car's a year from being paid off and I'm going to take 500 bucks out of my budget for the car loan payment. Um, maybe I'm in sales and I'm, I got, I got sales with commissions coming out in the future. So there's a lot of cool reasons that I, we, we don't want to do this if somebody can only afford 1800 a month. We're going to put them in real trouble two years from now. But if, if they can afford, yeah, plus they won't fall. Like, so we qualify them here. Yeah. Well, that's a really cool program. Um, let's take just a second and talk about accessory dwelling units. Um, this is one that's maybe a little more niche because not all of you, not all homes are going to have an accessory dwelling unit, but especially um, some of our some of our builders are starting to build homes with accessory units. So for example, Fieldstone Homes, they have a couple of communities that they're building with accessory dwelling units. Um, Visionary Homes has some, R5 has some. So especially new construction, they're already approved with the cities. Um, you're gonna find maybe a lot of 
mother-in-law apartments, especially in maybe Provo and Orem, all over for that matter, but in those areas, university type communities specifically, sometimes those aren't legal with the city. So that can get a little dicey, but we can count the income from those accessory dwelling units um, using loans from Freddie Mac or these specific loan programs. We can use 75% of the rent to help them qualify. So the first question I usually get asked is, do they have to have a lease? And the answer is actually no. When we send the appraiser out, we ask the appraiser, do an analysis on that mother-in-law apartment or that accessory dwelling unit. Tell us how much the market will support in rent. And we can count that in lieu of actually getting a lease agreement. So that can help somebody. Now, the way your buyer is going to look at it is, oh, I can rent that for $1,200. My payment's $25. So now I only have a $1,300 mortgage payment, which from a cash flow standpoint, yeah, that's exactly right. Unfortunately, we don't look at it that way in qualifying them. Um, we add the net income. We add that income on top. So in our case, our guy made six grand a month. Let's just say his his rental unit will rent for a thousand. So I can use seven fifty. So now I make his income six thousand seven hundred and fifty. So I have more qualifying income to help him qualify. Um, so those are really cool. So watch for those if you have if you have buyers, especially buyers that are like interested in uh, investing and investing in real estate, this might be a great first house for them. They can get their feet wet being a landlord while living in the same house, which makes management a whole lot easier. So keep that in mind. And talk to Melissa. I mean, if you have somebody that's interested in that, we've got a handful of builders that we can line you up with that have those products. So, oh, I didn't save. Well, any any questions? Okay. All right, you bet. And I got the sheet. Um, yeah, so just kind of in summary, you know, I think um, there are a lot of lenders that do a great job, but there are a lot more lenders, I think, that will stop and choose the path of least resistance rather than taking those extra steps, doing the extra work that can make a huge difference in what you do. What was that? Thirty? We came up with 35 grand more in purchasing power. Um, it wasn't a ton of work. It's not like that. It's not like we're going to run ourselves ragged doing that. We do that on every single deal, but I just don't know that that happens across the board in our industry. So um, thanks guys for being here. From, from all you out on Zoom, any questions, anything you want to chime in with? If not, thanks so much and have a